Hey everybody, soybean farmer here. I was out mowing the grass yesterday and noticed, well, they're back. So this morning we're going to see what we can do about uh, reducing their population. Got a product here that when mixed with this product here at that level there works really good. Um, you can see I've got 10 ounces in here. It's 8 ounces of that, 2 ounces of that. Um, took several years for me to find something that I could buy over the counter um, without a chemical license that would be effective against these fire ants. Now if you know what fire ants are, you know you do not want them in your yard, you do not want them around you. Uh, I've been fighting these things now for about eight years. They go in the ground deep. I mean, they go down about three foot. So you have to be able to saturate their mound or you're not going to kill all of them. For years, well, the first couple of years, I fought these things with a two-gallon tank sprayer. And uh, visualize scrubbing your kitchen floor with... A toothbrush because <laughs> that's about how effective a two gallon tank sprayer is when you've got fire ants on your farm so I finally upgraded and got me something decent let's walk out here and take a look at it what I did was I went and bought myself a little pull behind tank sprayer um, thing max capacity is 15 gallons I don't generally fill it that full usually go about 12 and a half, need some room to add chemicals, you need some room to agitate and mix what you're putting in there. We'll go ahead and pour this in now. Okay, we'll end up rinsing this and then pour the residue back in that tank. Let me show you uh, how it works. Come on over here and look at me. Alright, this is the manifold area right here. This line right here feeds the boom. It's got a little small uh, three nozzle boom sprayer on it. Um, I've got that shut off with this valve here. Now this is the return back to the tank for um, agitating and mixing and then this is the optional line here that I can attach to a wand sprayer that I'll have up here with me on the seat. Now, I didn't get fancy with connectors and all. I just go with the clamps here to the battery and I've got a switch that conveniently located right here where I can get my hands on it beside the operator seat. Now what I'm gonna do now is just turn it on and basically what's going on now pump is pulling right out of here through the pump to the manifold and since the only valve that's open is the return to the tank we're just mixing the chemicals with the water that's in the tank of course another way to mix it is grab it like this and do that you won't do that with a big old 500 gallon tank sprayer <laughs> but that's how you get started with it let it sit there and do that now, that little motor is kind of high current, so you better have a good alternator on your uh, machine. This works out great because in these uh, large Briggs and Stratton motors, they actually put an alternator, and the alternator that's in this motor has a 15 amp uh, output. So there'll be plenty of power here to drive it. I mean, right now it's driving, the battery's driving it fine, uh, without the engine even cranked. But uh, let's go up here and let me show you what the colony was I ran into yesterday that made me say, okay, get the tank sprayer out. Well, we'll take a trip up there and I'll show you. All right, what we're looking at here is a fire ant mound. Uh, fire ant. These things sting you, it burns for about three days. It's miserable. Um, now, right now it looks pretty docile, but let's see who's home. Ah, they must 
not be up yet. Okay, this mound is nobody home. Let's try it over here. There's one. That's nothing like what it should have been. That was still gonna spray it. All right, let's go over here and look at this one. There's some amazing. This is in the edge of a field. Let's see if these are home. Yep. Watch what happens right there. Look at that. Those things are highly aggressive. Punch one little hole in the ground and the whole army comes out to uh, attack. I mean, they didn't come out to see what's going on. They came out to attack. So, stick to take with me. Okay. I'm actually really glad that one was empty or already dead. Now let me get some spraying done over here and I'll show you the end result. All right, this is a pretty good sized monster mound right here. You can see them. I've already woke them up, got them running around. Uh, so I'll set the camera up here. You have to saturate these things or you will not put an end to them. Uh, stung by fire ant, you'll start an attack on these things to get rid of them. And then some people go pour gas in the uh, mound and set it off. That won't kill them off. It's kind of fun, but it won't kill them off. camera's picking it up or not but this is the first mound I sprayed as about 20 minutes ago and uh, I can see thousands of dead fire ants laying here mostly right there in that hole where they tried to escape and then again right there in that hole where they tried to escape a whole lot more of them down here yep these things are nasty little creatures there was a soil quarantine on White County, you're not supposed to take soil out of this county because of this problem. 
landscapers get into all sorts of trouble trying to take topsoil to a construction site when they get caught moving soil out of Wake County. Well, fighting a little problem here on the farm this morning, these stinking fire ants. You get, get these things out here in your bean field and the mounds can be foot and a half tall and you're cutting beans close to the ground and you don't catch it in time and you get a bunch of fire ants in that combine with you, it's not fun. In fact, there is a lot of fire ants down at the mill where uh, people have brought them down there. Well, everybody, have a nice day. It's been Soybean Farmer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Bye now.